Hey Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark and today we're checking out some more Reddit stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's crack on with today's first story. Much love guys. Now, our first story comes from Fun Alternative 980A and says, am I the arsehole for being mad at my sister because she showed a PowerPoint presentation with private sexy pictures of my husband and I at our wedding reception? Oh, Lord. <laughs> this past weekend was my wedding and it was technically my second proper wedding because my husband and I eloped and got married in Vegas. So this was an event more for the family than us. My sister was my maid of honor and she showed a PowerPoint presentation slash pic montage during the reception. But I thought it was going to be just cute pictures and videos of me and my husband. We've been friends since the first grade, so there's a lot of material. But instead, my sister was like, for all of you who don't know, this is my sister and my husband's name, second wedding. Let's see how the first one went. And here's the thing. We got married in Vegas. Shit got a little weird and we took a million pictures and video. Many of them look super inappropriate out of context and in context. Like we had no bachelor or bachelorette party. So the night before the wedding, we went to a strip club with female strippers and to one with male strippers as a gag. So there was a pic of me glaring fake angry at my husband looking at some big ass titties and one of my husband doing the same while I'm looking at a dude doing the helicopter with his dick. There was a pic of us eating dominoes in a hotel room only in our underwear. There was a pic of us doing an impromptu sexy cowboy slash cowgirl photo shoot near the Grand Canyon. It's an inside joke, too long to explain. There was a pic of me at a hotel pool wearing seriously minuscule bikini that may as well be invisible and virtually my whole ass hanging out with my husband doing the Will Smith meme. There was a pic of my husband naked playing the guitar with only the guitar covering his junk and me fake singing next to him wearing only a long t-shirt. There was even a pic that had nothing to do with the wedding of us in a costume as Cyclops and Emma Frost for a Halloween party. So it obviously looks like I'm wearing lingerie, which I was half. And my husband's package in the tight suit is super noticeable. The presentation finished with an admittedly very nice montage of pictures and video of me and my husband in school and high school, etc. Juxtaposed with more recent and appropriate pics. And it was genuinely very moving and everyone loved that part. But I was seriously dying of embarrassment about the other pics. I mean, my grandma was there and both of my husband's grandparents too, and a bunch of people who were technically but not really close to. Our friends thought it was hilarious though. Am I overreacting for thinking my sister crossed the line by including those pictures which I shared only with her in confidence? I gotta say before I even get started, like, on the back of this one, like, going to a strip club with female strippers and one with male strippers, like, for a gag to get pictures, just sounds like a lot of effort to me. <laughs> Absolutely. It's not my wedding, so who the hell am I, right? I get that. But it certainly did cross my mind while I was reading it and then sharing those pictures, like, <laughs> you watching a, a, a dick swinging around it. It's just wild with your sister. Oh, and here's a picture with my husband with a guitar with nothing else on. <laughs> it seems a bit, just seems a bit wild to me. I don't know. However, malicious or not, you said that you shared these pictures with her in confidence, which in my opinion would make her the arsehole anyway. And to put these pictures out or why your friends found it absolutely hilarious. There was a lot of people in there. That sister wouldn't have known how they're going to react. I know a lot of people that would find that kind of stuff funny, but at the same time, you need to question yourself and say, well, is it actually appropriate for this setting? Is everyone going to laugh or are some people going to be going, hold up, what the fuck? But Lucky Effective says on the back of this one and says, thank you, sis, for all your hard work in making the presentation. It only goes to prove what an utterly stupid, thoughtless person you are. Opie replies saying, I said to her something to that effect and she started crying and called me ungrateful. The part that kills me is that the second part of the presentation, the one that didn't include the Vegas pics, was the best thing ever. Like she somehow found a previously unearthed home video of my husband and I when we were like 8 years old, saying we were going to marry each other when we grew up and that made me so emotional, I felt like I was going to faint. 
If she just stuck to that, it would have been absolutely perfect. OP when someone called OP a prude in the comments and OP responded saying, I mean, I don't think I'm a prude just because I don't want my grandma and random family members to look at pictures of me looking at helicoptering dicks or at my husband in our underwear or semi-naked or my ass hanging out. I suppose some people in the audience thought it was fun, but some probably found it scandalous. I don't think my sister did it to embarrass me at all. I think she just wasn't thinking. And it's exactly that, you know, I doubt very much, assuming that they've had a great relationship up to this point, there's no golden child or something that we're not seeing here in this story, that why would she do it maliciously, right? It was just stupidly not thinking about the situation, the people that will be in the audience, etc. Like I've told you before, and I, I mean, I've, I had to write half this story out and I've spoken to a few people, so I'm still working on it. But I mentioned about a wedding that I went to when I was very young. It was in the local area and it's all set up in the local area. Like after the wedding, they had a big reception that was on the a grass area that was basically in the middle of all our, our homes. And the father has like a, a glass eye and is known to be a bit of a joker. That the whole family is absolutely wild. I've got many a story about this family, by the way. He's known for this gag of taking his fake eye out, dropping it into people's pints and then saying, oh, don't you want that anymore kind of thing. And obviously many people didn't find this as a gag or funny at all. But at this particular wedding, I'm not going to give away too much because I keep hinting at it. He puts it. <laughs> oh, dear. I, I feel wild even just saying it. There's a point where they're cutting the wedding cake and he takes out. <sighs> There's a point where they're cutting the wedding cake and he puts his eye on the cake next to the like the little bride and groom that stood on top of the cake and says something. That's all. I'm just going to leave it there for now. I'll leave you on that cliffhanger. He didn't do it maliciously, but obviously it. <sighs> Why would you do that, you know? And that's what, that's where I'm going to leave it for now. I'll, I'll, I'll try to finish off that story at some point. But Opie comes in with her update and says, I'm going to give this little update for closure's sake and then put this whole thing behind me. First off, I was taken aback by the amount of comments that said my sister clearly did this to humiliate me. Most likely out of jealousy. Jealousy of what? My husband? She's gay. And he's been in a loving relationship for ages. My wedding? My mum has even offered to pay for a wedding a million times and my sister's always declined. She doesn't want one. My trip to Las Vegas? My sister had wilder nights every other week back in the day. No, I don't think this was done maliciously. She was just a moron. <laughs> so the fallout of the pictures. My mum and aunt blew up at my sister about them, telling her that some family members low-key commented that they were pretty trashy. My husband assures me that on his family side, everyone thought it was hilarious and they're all chill about it. Only one of my elderly aunts approached me and, referring to the photo where my husband's package looks sizable in the Cyclops costume, whispered, congratulations, and walked away with a wink and a smile. So that was wild and unexpected, but nice. At least someone on my side of the family can see the bright side. Anyway. My sister got furious at me and my mum and called us unbelievably ungrateful and says this is the last time she does anything for either of us and right now she isn't talking to any one of us and I don't feel like talking to her either. Things are tense with my mum too because she's kind of blaming me, saying things like, what were you thinking? Why would you take those kind of pictures? And I'm not here for that bullshit so I'm kind of muting her too for the moment. Out of curiosity, I called my sister's partner. Let's call her Rose, who helped her edit the presentation, and asked what was my sister thinking including those pics. She said they cleared it with my husband in advance. I told him and he was like, what? No. He says my sister asked him if they could add some of the Vegas pictures to the presentation, but he assumed they were the non-weird, non-inappropriate ones, like the ones of us at the strip, at the gondola thing, etc. Why would he even assume she meant the inappropriate pictures? She's going to try and claim some misunderstanding or something, but I don't buy it. Anyway, I know I'm going to forgive my sister eventually and my mum will do too. The portion with the other pics and videos and especially the video of 8 year old us seriously moved me so deeply that it's winning the battle against the full body cringe I'm still experiencing from the pics. I'm going on my honeymoon this weekend and hoping everything will be back to normal by the time I come back. 
Then OP added this comment that said, Honestly, the most mortifying part of me wondering how his family, specifically his parents, were going to take it. But apparently even his grandparents thought it was a hoot. So that kind of gives me a bit of peace. As for my own family, meh, it's honestly whatever. They can think I'm low class and trashy all they want. I couldn't care less. I kind of find it weird at the end that the sister doubled down on this. You know, you thought after you've been told that you've upset the bride, you just go, Look, I'm really sorry. I, I thought it'd be funny and try to explain it to, to mend what, what happened. Because in the end, she's the one who chose to put these pictures in there. She's the one who didn't think of the situation, etc. It's a genuine mistake. Just own up to it and say, I fucked up. Move on. It sounds like OP would have been happy with that and just moved on quite easily if they just owned up to it kind of thing. But what do you guys make of this situation? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story. Now, our next story comes from two users because it's the son. Then the dad comes in and it's titled, Am I the asshole for banning my bio dad from graduation? I, 18 male, am graduating next week. Graduates are allowed to bring three guests, so I'm bringing my mum, dad, and my boyfriend. My sister is also graduating, and she's bringing her two friends from camp. My bio dad, Ted, found out about the graduation and asked me for a ticket for him and his wife. I told Ted that there were no tickets. He found out about the extra ticket, and he called and begged me to come to his only kid's graduation. I refused and said I wouldn't find another ticket for his wife either. I told him he was not my dad, and if he tried to come to my graduation, I'd get him kicked out. I don't think of Ted as my dad. My dad, technically my stepdad, Jason, is my dad. When my mum was pregnant with me, Ted got his dream job in a different state across the country and told my mum he had to take it. My mum couldn't come. He left us anyways and she gave birth alone. A few months later, he asked for a divorce because he found someone else. When I was in pre-K, I met Madison and we became best friends. Her mum had left her as a baby too. Long story short, my mum fell in love with her dad and they got married when we were seven. As far as I'm concerned, they're my real family and Ted's a stranger who shares my DNA. Now Ted's family is blowing up my phone calling me spoiled and accusing my mum of parental alienation and said I was being disrespectful to Ted. His wife called and I told her to fuck off too. <laughs> Am I the arsehole? In the comment section the first person says not the arsehole it's a day about your achievement. If you do not feel he helped you get there that says a lot about his parenting. If you used your three tickets he is certainly not entitled to your sister's tickets. Opie says, I could ask my high school for more tickets, but I didn't want to. Another commenter says, not the arsehole. I wouldn't use the term bio dad, as that implies a certain degree of relations. A better term to use would be a biological donor, as that makes the nature of your relationship clear to anyone who hears it. Opie says, good idea. I wanted to call him sperm donor, but they actually are helping people have babies, so it's not fair to them. Another commenter says, not the arsehole. He is just a sperm donor. If he loved and cared for your mum, he wouldn't have left, and he certainly wouldn't have met someone else while on the other side of the country, knowing his wife was alone with his baby. It also doesn't sound like he ever reached out much to have a relationship with you, so honestly, what does he expect? Some states do adult adoptions. If your state does, you could always ask Jason to adopt you, now that you don't need your sperm donor to agree to sign over his rights. Opie says, my dad adopted me after they got married. Ted signed over his rights pretty quickly. He says it's because he wanted to make me happy as a kid, but I think it's because he didn't know his wife was infertile yet. My mum adopted Madison. A commenter says not the arsehole. Still, info. How much interaction have you had with him over the years? The way you write, it was minimal. But he seems to know too much for that to be the case. In any case, it's your graduation, and he shirked his responsibilities to his wife and you. Calling you spoiled seems a bit rich, and he alienated himself by moving far away. Opie says, he used to call me once every couple of months. My parents encouraged me to stay in contact if I wanted, but it's not like he ever bothered to anything more. It's mainly Ted's family that keeps him posted because I'm close with my cousins. So, then there was another post which was found over on the Am I the Devil subreddit that was linked to be the bio dad of Opie. 
and says, am I the asshole for telling my ex-wife and her husband to stop being inappropriate at our son's graduation party? I, 48 male, do not have a great relationship with my ex-wife, 42 female. Though I do my best to keep it courteous for our son's 18 male sake. They have done everything to alienate me from my own child and have succeeded with their wealth and connections to the point where I had no recourse in the courts. My son would say several hurtful things that his mother clearly coached him to say on the rare occasions I got to speak with him. He had a belated graduation party with his stepsister, also 18, this past weekend and when I arrived, my ex-wife and her husband, 37 male, tried to make me feel unwelcome. Though several members of my side of the family were there, I wasn't allowed near my son at all, not even for a single photo, and did not get to speak with him. It seemed her entire family coordinated an effort to keep me away from my son the entire time. At this party, my ex-wife was wearing a very inappropriate dress. Her entire back was exposed. I... <laughs> ah, dearie me. Here we go. I noticed that her husband was often caressing her lower back quite intimately. I felt disgusted that they were doing this at my son's graduation party. He kissed her several times as well throughout the night. When I was finally fed up, I walked over to them and firmly told them to stop with the public displays of affection. It was our son's special moment and their behavior was attention-seeking and disrespectful. My ex-wife threatened to kick me out. I told her it was not her place and her husband said, I'm his father, not you, and stood up as if to start a physical altercation. My son saw what was happening and came over. He told me to leave to keep the peace. I left without any fuss. Now my sister, my son's aunt, said I completely embarrassed her and our other family members at the party. My family is split. My mother, however, is on my side. Of course. And I'll tell you immediately that the comments were, you're the arsehole. But there was a couple, this comment that was downvoted, said everyone sucks here. The second bit makes me doubt the first, but if true, it wasn't cool to keep you out of the pictures if that's what your son wanted. That said, backless dresses are fine and you're not the PDA police. <laughs> Again, it's telling that your verbal objection was to their relationship, not being excluded from the celebration. Examine your priorities. The OP of that post says, I never got to speak with my son before the illustrious end of party. I don't know if he said nothing about me not being in any of the pictures. I have nothing against their relationships. I have a girlfriend of my own. Another commenter that was downvoted that said everyone sucks here. You were there for your son and you don't get to have an opinion on what she wears. But they also seem to have made it very difficult to be in your son's life, which isn't good for anyone involved. I just feel like we're missing info still though on how this all went down and why your son is so angry. OP says they have made it impossible to be in my son's life. They filled his head with lies about how I abandoned him and his mother and he refuses to hear the truth from me. I'm disappointed to say it, but it seems my son has severe anger issues given that he's always upset with me. Another commenter that was downvoted and says, everyone sucks here, yeah, look. Having an exposed back is not inappropriate, nor is showing affection and it sounds like they were going to wind you up in some way, even if she was wearing a burqa. They are clearly using the child as a weapon though. In our country, alienation is considered such an abuse of the child, it stands as a crime in its own right. And I can understand your distress, but direct your anger towards the right things in the right way and use it for good. What happened here only gave them ammunition to use against you. Opie responded saying they do their best to anger me, though I try not to let it get to me. The courts are biased against me and I can't even fight them in court because they forced me to sign away my rights. They've used every weapon in their stock to humiliate me and alienate my son away from me and it seems I can't win. Someone says, I'll bite. How did they force you to sign away your rights? That is a big claim. Opie says my son wanted my ex-wife's new husband to adopt him. She coached him to say that he would hate me forever if I didn't sign away my rights. That we would speak more on my terms if I did and that he would be happier. For my son's sake, I agreed but regretted it ever since. Someone says, can't imagine why you're divorced. Opie says, for your information, we're divorced because when I got an amazing, prestigious opportunity to have a life-changing career move, my ex did not want to move a few states and kept my infant son with her ever since. Someone says, you're the arsehole. Sorry. It's their home. After reading what 
horrible people they are and all the horrible things they've done to you. I'm surprised you were even invited. Were you invited or did you hear about it from others and just show up? OP says, it was an open invitation posted to Facebook. <laughs> Another commenter that says, everyone sucks here and says, sounds like they knew how to press your buttons and you let them. OP says, Max wife's husband is particularly adept at this. I have no doubt he was stroking her back for that reason. Then someone says, were you present in his life? When you mentioned moving a couple of states away, did you try to visit him in person? Did you try to set a custody schedule? Either through your ex-wife or the courts, so that he could visit you often. OP says, yes, though I was incredibly busy. I spoke to him at least once every couple of weeks, since my new job did not pay well at the beginning. I was unable to afford to fly to him, something my ex used constantly against me. I tried to fight her in the course, but she and her husband have money, and it was always a loss for me. Someone says, could have given him a much better life, but your ex and her husband used their wealth and connections against you. Even according to your own telling of this, it seems like your ex and son did just fine. Also, not really all that selfish to want to stay somewhere with your family, career, friends, and support structure. It does seem pretty selfish of you to ask her to abandon all that for your career though. Your mental acrobatics are truly a little stunning to behold. OP says, there are other things than material wealth that are valuable in life. My ex-wife coming from a poor background should have realized that. But she passed her money-hungry ways onto my son, who is a gifted artist but wants to pursue computer science. No doubt for the fat paycheck. Someone says, how often did you return home to see your son after this prestigious move? Did you pay child support? Did you call him regularly? Opie says I spoke to him at least once a week or two. If I were really busy, I could not afford to visit him in person. I sent him many gifts. Someone says, did you ever visit in person? Have him visit in person or was it just phone calls only? Opie says when I was older and more established, I visited him in person. Someone says to OP, you're the arsehole. I'm getting a strong sense that you're not telling the whole story. The strangest part is you describe being at your son's graduation party and have been effectively barred from seeing him at all. Then in the following paragraph, you're pissed that your ex's back is showing and her husband has his hand on it. How is it they're able to block you from seeing him while you're at the same party without causing a confrontation? But then the dress issue leads to a confrontation. It doesn't add up. OP says, I'm telling everything that is relevant. My son never approached me, never even asked to take a picture or asked for a congratulations. Every time I tried to get closer, his mother's family and her husband family would swarm around him and block me. Someone says you had an amazing and prestigious career move that you left your wife for, but still never had the time and money to visit your son or pay for him to visit you when you live in the same country. For 18 years. You're the arsehole. This has to be a rage bait troll. Opie responds saying, it was an incredibly prestigious fellowship in a field that is very difficult to break into, though it did not pay well. It gave me opportunities I never would have been able to pursue otherwise. I saved up a hefty chunk of my salary in case I ever got this opportunity. That's how prestigious it is. After a few years, I was paid quite nicely in my new field and flew out to visit my son often. So the original OP comes back into the post with another one saying, I figured out my bio dad posted on Am I the Arsehole? And now I know how he sees me and the world. And it's exactly as moronic, self-pitying, and narcissistic as I expected him to be. If it wasn't my actual bio dad, Ted, I'd have thought it was a troll. Ted literally thinks my mum and dad conspired to keep me away from him for 18 years. Ever wonder why I don't want to be around you? Maybe it's because I don't want to be near an arsehole who abandoned his pregnant wife for a bullshit dream job living on minimum wage in a cabin for three years. Maybe it's because you left my mum for another woman while she was raising me as a single mum and you were out living your dream. Maybe it's because you called once a month, if that. Maybe it's because you haven't paid a single cent of child support. Or maybe it's because my stepdad stepped up to raise me. I know you fucking hate my dad, Ted. He's a better man than you are and my mum and I are so lucky to have him. He's my real dad. And it's not just because he adopted me after you signed away your rights. It's because he was the dad I needed, even when my mom and him weren't dating. I want you to know that I wanted him to be my dad since I was four years old. Or maybe it's because mom and I have the picture-perfect family that you wanted with your wife that you hate because she's infertile and isn't 21 anymore. 
a mum, a dad, a son, and a daughter, happily living together as a family. You had me and mum, and you left us for a higher calling, and are mad that we didn't come crawling to you. You were never part of my family, Ted. My accomplishments aren't yours to claim. You did nothing to earn this graduation. We graduated at the top 5% of our class because mum tutored us. We got into good colleges because dad took us to our clubs and games and meetings and tournaments and everything you called frou-frou nonsense. He was our mentor for robotics. Did you know that? No, because you don't care what I like. It's us, by the way, because I have a sister that you try to ignore. Because it was okay for you, a 30-year-old man, to abandon his wife and child. But it's unacceptable that a teenage boy stepped up to raise his daughter as a single dad. I don't know how you think the way you do. I don't want to know. I'm not your son. So someone was curious on the back of that and said, Me too. I'm curious about the nature of Ted's dream. I enjoyed how OP yeeted Ted into the sun using only words. OP, the son, responded, basically he's always been an elitist dick and he got some scholarship to go live in a cabin for two to three years making 15k and writing academic religious shit and he jumped on the shitty opportunity. My mum supported him through grad school and he just left her when she was pregnant with me because apparently it was his calling. My mum literally couldn't travel because it was a high risk pregnancy. Someone responded saying, oh my god. Was he the guy complaining about your mum's inappropriate backless dress and how he wasn't invited to your graduation party and other BS? Opie says, yep, I banned him and his wife from our graduation. I don't know why he crashed our graduation party. My mum's still a bit shaken up about it since he cornered her to talk about the dress before my dad came back. Someone said I read some of his comments and other comments he and he got dragged rightfully so. He sounds like he's always the victim and refuses to take responsibility. I'm glad you have loving parents growing up. Opie said, Nothing ever is his fault. Listening to him, you'd think the whole world was against him. Yeah, I'm very lucky for my mum and dad. My sister and I were the best matchmakers. Lol. Someone says he made a complete ass out of himself and got dragged in the comments. Opie, it sounds like your parents and your extended family love you and have your back. Don't give this Yahoo any more thought. He's just bitter because he made a bad choice years ago and then continued to make bad choices. Keep living your best life and kicking ass. Congratulations on your graduation. OP says, yeah, I'm very lucky to have an awesome family. Unfortunately, we've got no contact with Ted's family because they're pushing us to forgive him again. Even my cousins. I'm tired of the cycle of him doing something awful. His family being mad at him for a few minutes and then them pushing us to forgive him this time. And another commenter says something aimed at the bio dad first says, Hope you realize you're a sperm donor and nothing more. Please leave your son alone. He deserves so much better than your harassment. Then says to OP, OP, could you get back payment for child support? That may be the only thing that Ted could be useful for. OP says, I don't like to use the word sperm donor because sperm donors are actually helping people have children. They're doing a good thing. Ted's a waste of space. I don't know for sure, but I think because my dad adopted me, Ted doesn't owe child support to my mum anymore. I never understand like when people post their own version, like the bio dad coming in with their am I the arsehole side of things, and they say that it was parental alienation, etc., which, you know, the son later said, no, that's absolutely not true. Why do people come into it like bio dad and absolutely just lie through their teeth? I, I know it's for validation, but what's being validated isn't the truth. Not that he was validated anyway. Like it said in the comments, he was just dragged, but I just find that wild. Anyway, now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And just a huge thank you for being here today, getting involved in the stories, your love, your support, your time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so, so much. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Take care and much love.